Dearly beloved, we welcome you for the online service of the El Bethel Tabernacle. On this day, 16th of January, what a wonderful time it is for us to worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness in the places that we are in. Let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our Father, what an honor it is for us to be at your feet, to worship you, to honor you and praise you and worship you as a family, O oh God. For you alone are worthy to receive all glory, all honor, all power and might and riches. We pray, Lord, that as we lift up your name, that you would inhabit the praises of your people. You will be seated in our midst, O oh Father God. Lord, we pray that as we worship thee, we will experience you afresh this morning. We pray, Father, that you would enable us by your spirit to worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen. Now may I invite the El Bethel Church choir to lead us in a time of worship and adoration to our Lord Almighty.
we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, all ye saints of God. Oh, sing for joy to God, a string. Oh, sing for joy to God, a string, a string. Draw near to Him, He is here with us. Give Him your love, He's in love with us. He will heal our hearts, He will cleanse our hands. If we rend our hearts, He will heal our land. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Oh, sing for joy. If we call to Him, He will answer us. If we run to Him, He will run to us. If we lift our hands, He will lift our hearts. If we praise His name, all ye saints of God. Draw near to Him, He is here with us. Give Him your love, He's in love with us. He will heal our hearts, He will cleanse our hands. If we rend our hearts, He will heal our land. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Oh, sing for joy. God has prayed. Oh, sing for joy to God has prayed. Oh, sing for joy to God has prayed. Has
our soul on wings like eagles held by the hand of God I will run and not grow tired when on his name I call the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name for you are great so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you Let's sing one more time with wholeheartedly. Let's give a heart to Jesus and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Jesus, you are the fairest. Jesus, you are wonderful. Your name exalted above every other name you are wonderful and you are here jesus you are the fairest jesus you are wonderful your name exalted above every other name you are wonderful you are here you deserve you deserve the glory and the honor lord we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name you deserve the glory As we live your holy name For you are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one else 
like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no of the glory hallelujah hallelujah we worship you father god we give you praise and we give you glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen as we prepare ourselves to partake in the communion i invite brother fortune to lead us in a time of a short devotion as we partake in the emblems of the lord Praise the Lord Church, the saints of God, sons and daughters of the living God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we are going to commune with our Lord and Savior and uh, I hope you are prepared with a little juice and a, a piece of bread or even little water in a glass and a piece of biscuit. The little topic of the day for our communion service is about the throne in heaven as witnessed in the Spirit by Apostle John. Jesus is a loving God he corrects and earnestly disciplines the saints of God, his sons and daughters. What a humble God we serve. He is ever willing to dine with us, provided we open the door of our hearts and let him in. That would be the greatest ever invitation a human could ever imagine. We would bring out our most expensive and best cutlery, prepare the best ever dishes offered to the Lamb who sits upon his throne. And after that, he will invite us to sit beside him on his throne, and this only for those who overcome the world, as he also overcame the world and is now seated beside his father's throne. The Spirit of the Lord had conveyed these sayings to the seven churches of Ephesus, of Smyrna, of Pergamos, of Tyatira, of Sardis, of Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Today these churches, except Smyrna, are ruined. The Smyrna Church today is an Orthodox church located in the city of Izmir in Turkey. The Lord had favored Sangeeta and myself to visit a few of these churches, but nevertheless, the body of Christ is a spiritual church as God had created mankind with a spirit, soul, and body. These few words are referenced in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 19 to 22. As many as I love, says the Lord, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath he and hear, let him hear what the Spirit 
said unto the churches. Let us pray. Abba, Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day that how thou hast bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you are ever living and true and righteous. God, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us one more day on this planet Earth to praise and worship you and to adore you and give you all the praises that you are due, Lord. And Lord, we pray unto the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne, be and receive glory, honor, power, authority, dominion, majesty, praise, and wisdom forever and ever. Amen. Bless his holy name. Let us commune with the Lord. Please take up your piece of bread or biscuit and repeat after me. The body of Christ broken for me. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for me. Amen. For this coming week, we have quite a few birthdays and uh, a few anniversaries. Firstly, the birthdays. Arushi Joseph on the 20th this week, followed by Rita Roy on the 21st, Sister Veena Aaron on the 21st, Nancy Fritchley on the 21st, and Arav Kumar on the 21st. Anniversaries for this week, David and Farrell Rollins on the 16th today, Brigadier VP Das and Purnima Das on the 18th, and Deputy Commissioner of Police Andrews and Shashi on the 20th. For those online, please raise your right hand and we shall pray for these birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Lord, we thank you for your saints, your sons and daughters who look up to you and praise and worship you every day in their lives. Yes, Lord, we want you to shower an abundant blessing upon these dear children of yours. Yes, Lord, as those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries right this week, Lord, a mighty blessing upon them as they go out and come in and as they look up to you every second, every minute, every hour of the day. Yes, Lord, not only for today, but for the days to come and also for the years to come. Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh. You love them and so you care for them. Lord, provide for their basic needs day to day. Lord, also provide them with so many blessings, Lord, such as jobs and other uh, things that we as humans require to live on this earth. Yes, Lord, yes, I pray that these birthdays and anniversaries today will look up to you for everything, for spirituality, for economics, for, uh, for jobs, for uh, whatever is required for you to bestow upon them. Lord, you are a ever loving and caring God. And so we uh, bring these folks to you that you will bind them with your love. And also those who are celebrating their birthday, you will bind them as one. The day they got married under your faith and belief, 
Yes, there are no more two, but they are one. And you will also uh, strengthen their marriage along with their children. Yes, Lord, bless this couple along with their families. We thank you, Lord. We pray unto you for all the blessings that you are going to bestow upon them that you have promised to them. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. The announcements for the week are every evening we have our teleconference prayer at 8 p.m. The meeting will be held on Google Meet and the links will be shared afresh on the church WhatsApp group. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. we meet for a Bible study on Google Meet. At the very same medium we will exchange the links so that we invite each one of you to participate in this prayers of intercession as well as the Bible study. Invite your friends, share it to your neighbors and encourage them to join along with you. This Friday we have our fasting and prayer at 10.30 a.m. in our church. We encourage each one of you to partake during this fasting and prayer. We'd want you to share the church YouTube links to your friends and contacts and encourage them to subscribe to our channel so that each one will be blessed in whatever situations that they are in. God bless you. Now may we offer our offerings unto the Lord as we bring it as a sign of worship to Him. The details to which you can send in your finances are on the screen. You can send in your offerings or visit the church office to leave the offerings here. May I invite the church choir to lead us in a time of worship unto the Lord as we offer in our offerings. Father God, we, as a family, we bring in our offerings to you. Lord, as a sign of worship for all that you have done for us, we are grateful for this gift of life and the gift of salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit whereby we can call you as Abba Father. We bring in all of this as a sign of surrender. Dear God, we pray that you would bless every offerer, O oh God. Rebuke the devourer in every situation that they are in. We pray for a divine providence in their situations, O oh God. We pray that you would bless them. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May I invite Reverend 
Andrew Taylor to come forward and lead us in a time of the word of God. We believe the word will minister to each one of us. Reverend Andrew Taylor. Good morning, El Bethel Tabernacle Congregation. Um, a few weeks ago, I was right here. Uh, Pastor Sandra had invited me to minister, and I walked out the front door. I was a little early, and I saw the listing of the Ten Commandments on the outside wall. And right there, I felt in my heart the Holy Spirit give, gave me a message, and then it became two messages. So here's the first of two from the Ten Commandments. This covers the first six, which is a little easier than the last four. Believe me, that'll be for another Sunday, okay? So Ten Commandments, the first six. We find them in Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 17. All the Ten Commandments. Many, many years ago as a young man, I remember going to see the movie, The Ten Commandments, at I think it was a theater on MG Road here in Bangalore. And in front of me uh, was a mother with her little son. And the movie began and on the screen in big letters came the Ten Commandments. And I remember that little boy in the dark saying to his mom, Mommy, Mommy, that's the Ten Compartments. And I just smiled behind them. Well, the first six of the Ten Commandments, most Christians will say that we generally do uphold or hold true to. And in a nutshell, these are the first six. Number one, you will have no other gods before me. These are all found in Exodus 20, 3 to 17. So the first of the first six, you will have no other gods before me. Second, you should have no idols or heathen graven images. Third, you should not take the Lord's name in vain. Fourth, remember to keep the Sabbath holy. Fifth, honor your father and mother. And sixth, you shall not commit murder. So these are the six we want to do a quick overview of today. But the final four is where we really tend to fall down. And that's for another message. And if you're uh, if you really want to know now, number seven is you will not commit adultery. Eight is do not steal. Nine is do not bear false witness. And number ten is you shall not covet. Now, notice of all the ten commandments, no stealing, no killing, no adultery, no uh, false witness, but there's not one commandment that says you shall not lie or tell lies. I hope you're not feeling happy about that. For some people, it's like drinking water. Sorry to say. But you'll also find out, especially the last four commandments, which we'll do another time, invariably those who are involved in breaking those commandments automatically tell lies too. Also, Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 says, For without, that's outside the kingdom of God, are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and makes or practices or tells lies. So clearly there's scripture that says liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Liar, fire. Sounds like when we were children we would say liar, liar, pants on fire. You have your part in the lake of fire if you're a liar. Also, like I said, if we break any of the last four commandments, it, we try to cover it up by lying about it. Now let's focus on the first six commandments. All right, Number one, you will have no other gods before me, the Lord declares from Exodus 20 verse 3. Even the most sincere followers of Christ will admit that we do revere, honor, respect and worship the God of the Bible. God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And that we worship our God of the Bible above all others. So this one is easy to say, I keep this commandment, Pastor Andrew. Fine. The caution here is that he, Almighty God, must have the highest place. He can have no competitors. Not only is he above all he is without equal. He's matchless. He's peerless. He's without 
peers, no classmates, nobody. In, he is in a class by himself. There's no other name, no other so-called God with a small g or deity. No one and nothing. Jesus is to be number one, full stop, period. That covers the first commandment of the six. Number two, you will have no idols or graven images. We are not to have them. We are not to keep them. Not in the house, not even outside in the garden, in a grotto or a grove or a little cave. We are not to make them, we are not to carve them, we are not to buy them, we are not to keep them. By buying them or purchasing them, we are encouraging others to make or to manufacture them and to sell them. But far worse is the fact that such a practice of having and keeping idols is abhorrent, is hated by our holy God. Caution about the second commandment. Though many believers may not have a single idol, physical idol in their homes, and idols, by the way, can be made of wood, plastic, uh, metal, gold, silver, iron, steel, aluminum. They can be made of a particular plastic that even glows in the dark. It's an idol and it's an abortion abomination to God, to the holy God of the Bible whom we worship. So the caution is, though many believers might say, I don't have a single physical idol in my house, we can be guilty of having idols in our hearts. A person or a thing that we cherish more than God. That idol has to come down, has to be broken, has to be removed. Anything or anyone that takes precedence over Almighty God in our hearts or lives has become an idol and must be cast down, broken down and removed. I remember singing as a child a beautiful worship chorus. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Watch the next two lines. Break down every idol. Cast out every foe. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, let your prayer and cry be today. Break down every idol in my heart, any person, anything that I have so longed for, if it's taken the first place in my life, break it down, take it out from my heart, Lord. Only let Jesus be number one. The third of the first six commandments. We're not to take or speak or use God's name in vain. In the Old Testament, the Jewish people, for them the name of God was Yahweh. And it was so sacred and holy to them, they wouldn't even pronounce it or say it. Yet we just say, oh, yeah, I was talking with Jesus. It's like, hello, like you talk to, I know he's a friend. I know he's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. But many times, you know, we should remember to say the Lord Jesus. He was not our classmate in school whom we played cricket or hockey or soccer with. He is not our equal. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. Before whose name even demons fear and tremble. So don't use the name of Jesus so cheaply. Don't use it casually. He is not our classmate. He's our Lord and Master. Caution with the third commandment. In our modern society in which you and I live today, we see the rampant and flippant use, misuse and abuse of the name of Jesus Christ. You know, people will say, I'm sure you've heard this, oh, jeez. It's spelled like G-E-E-Z. 
or Z, G's. You know what that's a contraction for? Jesus. Imagine using the name of Jesus. Like, ah, oh, Jesus. And we hear some folk and we hear some Westerners talking like that and think it's pretty cool. I can talk like them. They're abusing the name of Jesus Christ. And you need to stop doing that too, my friend. And even the name Christ. I was standing at an ATM one time in the nation of Fiji. And the man in front of me was a non-Christian man. And he put his card inside the machine. You know, on a few occasions, the machine swallows your card. You don't see your card again. He got so angry at the machine. I'm standing behind him. He didn't know I'm a Bible teacher. He used a four-letter word before the name of Christ. Oh, my flesh wanted to suck him right there for abusing the precious holy name of Jesus. Be careful. Here's a question. Why doesn't the world use and abuse names of other so-called G-O-D-S, gods with a small g, or deities? Why don't they use those four-letter words before the other names of so-called gods that other people worship in other religions. You don't hear that. It's only used before the name of Jesus or before the name of Christ. Do you want to know why? Satan is not stupid, my friend. He knows that there's only one name in which there's power. He trembles before one name and that's the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so he's trying to make the name of Jesus Christ cheap. But he will never succeed. Think about it. A person who's a cheat, who has a machine that can print counterfeit currency, do you think he will copy a counterfeit note or a co copy the original? He'll want to copy only what's original so that his fake counterfeit currency looks as close as possible. Nobody will copy a counterfeit. Only a fool would do that. So Satan's not that stupid. He doesn't want you to abuse some other names of other deities. He only wants to abuse the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So don't ever get caught in that cheap trap of using, misusing and using cheaply the name of the Lord Jesus. Some other folk I've heard say this. I swear to God. I swear upon my mother. Let God and your mother in peace. Do you know what the Lord Jesus said? Let your yes be yes. And your no be no. You know why people have to use all those extreme uh, statements? Because they've lied before they know people don't believe them. They should just know this brother, this sister. If they say yes, they're going to do it. If they say no, it's no. That's what the Lord Jesus taught us. And remember the Bible, Jesus, the Lord Jesus said, don't swear by heaven because it's God's throne. Don't swear by earth because it's his footstool. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Stop these heathen practices, child of God. They should have no place in the life of and mouth of a child of God. Fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Now for the Jewish folk, the Sabbath was technically from sundown on Friday when the sun set to sundown on Saturday. That 24 hour period. We celebrate the day of rest on the first day of the week, Sunday, and that's Primarily because our Lord Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week. Nevertheless, it's good to have a day of rest. A day set apart to worship God. Obviously, this message is being streamed online because the authorities have buckled to pressure and to fear and to the media. But we bow to Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. However, when in-person fellowship is available, seize the opportunity. Hebrews 10.25 says, do not stop coming together like some people do. 
So whenever you have the chance to come together in person to worship the Lord, to praise God corporately, to receive the word and to fellowship, come out. So that's why we have a Sabbath or a day of rest. We celebrate it on Sunday, the first day of the week, to come together to worship the Lord corporately because there's strength in numbers. Amen? Now, caution. Don't be a workaholic. Take that day of rest. Stop working every single day of the week. Keep that first part of the day to have fellowship at church, at your local church, in this case EBT. And if you're watching from around the world, wherever your local church is, go to church on Sunday. Stop making excuses. Stop going to church of St. Mattress. It's not mattress. Get up. Get ready. Go and fellowship with the saints of God. Amen. Take that day of rest. Prioritize church and family. Worship in the corporate setting. This has nothing to do, I'm not talking, mixing this up with your personal daily devotions. That needs to be seven days a week, a separate personal time. We're talking about Sunday, the day of rest, coming together to worship together. By the way, don't be legalistic about this observance. Now, I know of some Orthodox Jews in New York City, and I'm sure it's the same for them around the world. Remember, their Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday. But they, if they come back from work before that time, and let's say it's a summertime, and so the, it gets dark maybe around 8 o'clock. So there's no need to put your lights on at 6 o'clock. Let's, let's suppose the sun whatever. So they don't even, they leave the front door slightly open so that a non-Jewish friend of theirs will come in and when it gets dark that friend knows to come and switch on the lights so that the Jews, the Orthodox Jews are not doing any work even to put that switch on. Now that's being legalistic. We love the Jews. We support Israel 110%. Don't get me wrong. But my point here is for Christians, don't be so... Um, legalistic about it. What if you get a chance on Sunday afternoon, you've come to church, you've had lunch, and there's somebody has a swim, swimming, swimming pool. You go for a little swim. Don't be so legalistic. Relax. Have time with your family. That's okay. Okay. So don't be legalistic. Uh, what about if you have a baby and the baby needs milk and the milk is cold? A little child. You're going to warm it up? Seventh-day Adventists, they're very strict about the Sabbath. They're not even supposed to warm the milk on the Sabbath, so the baby has to have cold milk? Believe me, most of them break that rule and quietly warm the milk and give it to the baby. Yeah, so stop being legalistic. In fact, the Lord Jesus pointed out when the religious leaders tried to uh, get on his case because he did a healing miracle on a Sabbath day, he said, you hypocrites! If, if a donkey that you own fell into a pit on the Sabbath day, will you leave it there overnight or will you pull it out? If people are sitting by a wall, the wall breaks and falls down upon them, will you let them be there till, till, till the next day or will you take off the bricks? Of course you'll save them. Of course you'll pull out the donkey. How much more this person whom I just healed? We don't have to wait another day. Amen? Remember in Mark 2, 27 and 28, and I read, and Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Fifth out of six commandments we're doing today. Honor your father and mother. Again, this should be, should be fairly easy for most people. Children of God to say, I honor my mom and dad. I respect them. I'm blessed by them. However, it's not always the case. I know, we know of folk where say, dad has abandoned the family. Mom struggles to bring up the children by herself. Or maybe, and this is a fact, it's a young girl who's got pregnant 
Thank God she did not have an abortion and murder that innocent baby. It's not the baby's fault that you're pregnant. It's yours and your boyfriend's fault. But she has the baby and gives it up for adoption. Should that child not feel, you know what? I wasn't a wanted child. Worse still, in some families, the parents will tell a child, we already had three children, we weren't expecting you, you were not expected. You were an accident. Were you ever told that? That's some of the most cruel and honestly stupid things that some parents could say to their child. Every child is a precious gift from God. Regardless of the circumstances of your birth, Sir, ma'am, I don't care what your parents told you or what your step-parents told you or your foster parents told you or the state government told you, you are a gift from God. Can I have an amen? So now, the fifth commandment says, honor your father and mother. Most of us in the normal circumstance can say, I do, pastor. I honor my parents. I want to do what I can do for them. I'm thankful for everything they did for me. They raised me up. They paid everything, covered the cost for my food, clothing and shelter, my education. And if I have the chance, I will take care of them. If you didn't have parents that cared for you, I'm sure somebody else stepped in. Adoptive parents or somebody, foster parents. Or, or, or you saw another family where the parents took good care of their children. Try and Copy that model. If yours was highly dysfunctional, try and copy a positive model. Many people have done that, and you can too. Caution. If you were mistreated by one or both of your parents when you were young, ask your heavenly father to help you to forgive those parents. He has also likely brought someone else into your life who has shown you love and care and has taken the place of what should have been your parents. You can honor them. Now, even if you didn't have a normal upbringing, you would surely have seen a few families who had, uh, where respect and honor flowed. Try to emulate that model. Now watch out. For those of us, the majority, who've had a normal family where we do love and and appreciate our parents, and we say we love and respect and honor them, God forbid that we now, as young adults, we grow up, we become independent, we get married, we have our young families. Our parents have gotten older. We become so consumed with ourselves and with making money and with making a name for ourselves that now we have no time left for our elderly parents and our little children now, it's not always the case, but in some cases, they don't see much of their grandparents. We hardly have our elderly parents in our homes. We deprive them of quality time with their grandchildren. And we are more than happy. Hear me now. And in countries like India, it's becoming more and more like the West. We are more than happy to dump our aging Parents in a retirement home or nursing home, the first chance we get. We'd rather do that than to have them in our own house. Not everyone does this. Some folk do keep their parents at home with them. But many others, and not only put them in retirement or nursing homes, they hardly visit them. Hardly visit them. Can you imagine how pained they must be in their hearts? How they would yearn to see at least their grandchildren? So you see what it means when the word of God tells us in the 10th commandment number 5. Honor your father and mother. Honestly, you know what? There are some parents who would say, when I get old, and feeble, put me in a retirement home. I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that the reason that percentage of parents say that is because they know that their own children will not want to have them in their house. So they just graciously say, 
I'll go to a retirement home. They don't want to be rejected by their own children. What a tragedy. Just think of the huge positive aspect. If you had your elderly father or mother, that's the grandparents of your children at home, they have become amazing repositories of wisdom and experience in life. They could share with our children, that is their grandchildren, so many wonderful things and be natural teachers of life experience. They could share the history of our family generations with our children, which is their grandchildren. We miss out on all of that when we dump our elderly parents in retirement homes. I'm not saying there isn't a time when they get that old, if they're that sick, that they need 24-hour nursing care. That's a little different. Even then you could get someone to come home. We lose all of that transfer of history and love and culture from grandparents to grandchildren when we plonk them in retirement and nursing homes. Just a caveat here. If you do have your grandparents living at home and you got little children, don't use them as full-time free babysitters. Of course they would love to have time with the grandchildren. That will be a highlight of their lives. But you can't work them to the bone. They are too old now to be running after the little ones. So be careful you don't abuse them or have them home just for that selfish purpose. Amen? Okay. Number six out of six for today. The sixth commandment is, do not commit murder. Thou shalt not kill. Again, most believers would say, this is easy for me, brother. Pastor Andrew, I have never killed another person. And most of us, maybe there's not one murderer in this, in this place listening to this message. However, we have an expression in English which says, if looks could kill, sometimes we look at a person and wish they were dead. Come on, be honest. Who among us has never had that run through our mind? By the way, I want to put one caveat in here. If you are serving in the military for your country and you have to go to war, well, that wouldn't be called murder. You're serving your country in that capacity, whether it's Army, Navy, Air Force, or whatever. But under normal circumstances, in peace times, and if you're not in the military, we have no right to kill or to murder another person. And that includes abortion, which is murder. We have murdered an innocent baby. The safest place in the world for a baby should be the womb. But today the womb has become a tomb. And if there's a lady here who's been through an abortion, stop being condemned. Repent and ask God to forgive you. And you know what we forget many times? Many times that lady was forced to get an abortion because of pressure from the boyfriend or the husband or even sometimes her parents. You folk are equally guilty. You need to repent too for forcing that girl through that abortion. One wonderful thing is that baby went straight to heaven and we'll see that innocent child in heaven one day. Stop. Do not kill do not commit murder. By the way, if someone does, is involved in a hit job, in a murder, on trying to kill somebody, they should be in prison for life or face capital punishment, which is an eye for an eye, your life is forfeit, depending on the laws of each country. Caution for the sixth commandment. In Matthew 5.22, the Lord says, But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause for no reason shall be in danger of judgment and whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council and whoever says you fool have you ever called someone a fool idiot or other names 
Whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. I think all of us need to repent on this one. I've said earlier, we use the expression, if only if looks could kill. Many a time we, wished, we have wished that somebody we knew was dead. We've all been guilty of entertaining such thoughts. In that sense, then, every single one of us are murderers. Because we wished that somebody was dead. So we can see in summary that these first six commandments are generally easier to keep or to uphold. Even, but even here with these six, we often slip up. Just to recap, what are the six? Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. We say, yes, pastor, I worship Jehovah God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay. You should have no idols. Graven images, no pastor, I don't have any of them in my house or in my compound. Three, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. No pastor, I don't swear using the Lord's name. Or if I have been, I'm going to stop that. Four, keep the Sabbath. Or in other words, on the first day of the week, come for fellowship. E.g. Uh, El Bethel, uh, EBT people, make sure you take the advantage of whenever it's in-service meetings, come out and fellowship with the saints of God. Uh, and don't be a workaholic. Keep the rest of the day for family. Amen. Number five, honor your father and mother. We went into depth into that. Love, honor, cherish, respect. Uh, by the way, I'll throw something in here. I know a brother in America. He never knew who his father was. Decades later, thanks to the internet, he traced his father. He lives in Pennsylvania. He found his father was still alive and living in New Mexico. Contacted his father. They cried on the phone. And he and his wife went to visit his father for the first time in his life. Imagine that. Even though he was abandoned by his father, they wept. Forgiveness was there. And they now have a great relationship. Honor your father and mother. Number five. And number six was, do not commit murder. Whether it's trying to kill another human being or aborting an innocent, precious little baby in the womb or just anger wishing someone was dead. So these are the first six. Next time, Lord willing, we'll teach on the final four, what I call the final four. And just to give you a little teaser, it's, do not commit adultery, do not steal, don't bear false witness, and do not covet. Friends, this will be up on our uh, YouTube channel. So if you haven't, please do subscribe. It's Andrew space N space Taylor. And you can get the message with the notes from there. God bless you. We love you. El Bethel Tabernacle. Father, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you for this congregation that continues to show their resilience and strength. Even though their gracious, loving Pastor George is with you in eternity. They continue to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I pray for El Bethel Tabernacle, Sister Sandra, the pastors, the elders, the leaders, the congregation. That you will take them from strength to strength and glory to glory. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend uh, Andrew Taylor, for your sermon. Praise God for the work that has begun in us and the deposit of God's word in each one of our lives. Now, let's look to the Lord for the final benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forever. Our greetings to each one of you. We encourage you to share our church YouTube link to various friends and family so that they are blessed. God bless you all.